Hello again, in the previous video, we have learned what high speed counters are. In this video, we're going to do a simple project with counters. As you know, we cannot change the voltage or current signal at real digital input, using machine simulator software. And from the previous video, we know each high speed counter is connected to one or more digital inputs, that cannot be changed to. So, high speed counters cannot be used by machine simulator software. In this video, we're going to do a simple project with two general counters. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video. I want to use this predefined project. The Apples project. So, let me select the demo mode, to see how this system works. Then, I will explain and use my program. As you see, here are four digital inputs. Two push buttons to start and stop the system, and two photo cell sensors to detect apples and boxes. Also, it has three digital outputs. Let's start the system. As you have seen, this system fills boxes with the specific numbers of apples. So, this project needs at least one counter to count the number of apples. Now, let's exit from the simulator, and launch ISPSoft to write the PLC program. Because my program has not used new instructions, let me explain the final program briefly. Well, inside the first and second network, I've used set and reset instructions to store start stop requests, from the real and virtual push buttons, on this bit memory. I've used that during my program frequently. Inside the next network, each start request will activate this 16 bit counter. Then after 5 start requests, because of this clock pulse memory which was explained before, this output will start flashing. Because I assumed the system must be checked after every 5 start requests. Here, I wanted to show you, how counters can be used for maintenance's purposes. Note that, this number can be 1000 or 10,000 for real industrial equipment. Eventually, I've used this digital input to reset the counter, and in consequence to turn off the flashing output. The next network has used a 32-bit counter, C200 to count apples. It will be restarted, when a new box appears in front of the second photo cell. Remember, I cannot connect these virtual photo cells from the machine simulator software, to real digital inputs of my PLC. Instead of that, they can be connected to these bit memories through an OPC server, like previous videos. Let's continue. The next network determine when the conveyor must be on. Naturally, if the start request is enabled, the conveyor must be on, except it reaches in front of the apples creator system. After that, when 15 apples are put in the box, the conveyor must be turned on again. Finally, the last network determines when the apples creator system must be on. It will be on, if the start request memory is enabled, there is a box in front of the system, and also the number of passed apples into the box be less than 15. Now, let me download the program to my PLC.
Like previous videos the online mode can be activated to check the PLC program. But let's skip it, and close com MGR software, to connect it to my OPC server. Alright, like previous videos, I've defined my tags inside the Kepsiver X software. The push buttons and photo cell sensors will connect to my PLC using these 4-bit memories, and these three digital outputs will connect to the flashing output, conveyor, and Apple's creator system. Now, let me activate my OPC server. As you can see, the connection quality is good. So, my PLC is connected to the OPC server successfully. Now, Let's open the Easy PLC software to connect the design system inside Machine Simulator software to the OPC server. Note that, the connection settings inside the Easy PLC software have been explained during previous videos. So, let's connect the Apple project from the Machine Simulator to my PLC through the OPC server. Alright, I've done connection settings through the OPC server. Now, let's start the Apple projects inside Machine Simulator software. Now, let's test the project. Well, it seems the system isn't working correctly. Note that, I've checked my project to find the problem several times. Eventually, I understand that I need to exchange the place of these two tags, although I believe that, I've connected my OPC server tags to Easy PLC software correctly. So, if you want to connect an OPC server to Easy PLC software, maybe this problem will occur for you. However, let's continue to test my project. Now, let me run my PLC, and then press the start push button.
let's stop the process, and then start it with real push buttons. Note that, until now, I've started the system four times. Now, if I start it again, based on my program, the first digital outputs will start flashing. Now, let me use the first digital input, to reset the first counter in my program, and in consequence, turn off the first digital output. Alright, this video showed you a simple usage of counters. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.